never in all, you know, as, as not just an art major, but as a, as a, you know, a studier of history and stuff, I have never heard of art being like whitewashed. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's such a, an atrocity. It's a it's such a, a, a devastating thing in, for a piece of art. I mean, it, it I, I it's just I've never heard of anything so hard. Honest to God. So the hardest thing really is like an artist destroying other artists' work. Right? Especially when the offer was let me keep it. The civil rights issue is very important to me as an American. You know, where I offer to cover it. You know, and, and they say, that's not good enough because we know under the covering is a mural. That to me is one step away from kicking my door down mm -hmm. and entering my home and taking me away. And, yes. that, and that to me is not just devastating and an atrocity, but scary. Yes. Yeah. And obviously I don't scare easy, but I, and I realize that my home is not my home. I'm just keeping it for the government. Mm -hmm. This feeling that your your First Amendment right, uh, rights were violated, uh, it, but you you made some actually interesting uh, parallels to what you felt was uh, kind of Nazism and, and this like there it's I Gestapo. Should, it's Gestapo. That that is very personal to you. A absolutely, uh, anything selective persecution. We've se we've seen it. We've experienced it. Yeah. You know, it's nothing new. And the only thing is, we just don't seem to learn that when with the signs start popping up. We don't, we turn our backs and we buy into it. You know, the people that, that one couple complained because it, was, it wasn't it was about the art, it was about property values and money and stuff, not realizing that when this comes down, there's no win-win, there's no lose-lose, but it's one step closer to, to being in a situation that we were in about 70 years ago um, by a mastermind who knew the mentality of people and what they would do. And that to me is, is, is a very, uh, I, I, words don't have what it takes. And, and you, you were, you're, when, when you stepped out and said to these kids, I'm, I offer you my wall as a canvas, was because it was graffiti and ugly and a mess? It was, you know, I never saw it as anything more than just a canvas wonderful colorful art giving the ki giving the kids hope I, I'm a person that has gone through my life as an artist struggling and now it's time to pass the artistic torch and and I saw it as in a in a society where people are are fending for food on their tables and losing their homes to give them a little bit of hope and strength and to aspire to something to build a portfolio and maybe you can do it or just to have the experience of having once done it that was what it was about. So why did you feel that you had to take it off today? Why did you feel that? What, I really what had, I had no real choice. I spoke to the American Civil Liberties Union to appeal. It was, they, they caught me where I live, where, where most Americans do, in the pockets by, by exorbitant charges. Not the power play, but the charges. It was $250 to appeal. The American Civil Liberties Union told me I would lose. And, and the, the fine would come in. They're waiting with a citation in their hand for $2,000 and a lien on my house. And, and, and yeah, I, I just, I, there was no choice in that to compound these things. The American Civil Liberties Union said maybe further down the pike, but I just can't let two, three months of thousands and thousands of dollars. And then they will, they'll put a lien on my house and the kind of outspoken person and to stand up to building and safety and the city attorney and the mayor and the president who's off fighting civil rights violations in other countries, they would take my house away. Right, so. Mural or not, they're gonna take my house away. And, and so I felt, if I did it, it was the last. It was the last desperate move that I could possibly do, and we will go after it another way, but in a way where I have a roof over my head, where I can fight it. I can't fight it if I'm living in the street, and that's where I. That's where. And I come what did from. you tell the kids? I I told the kids did better than I did. I, I they saw how hard I desperately I fought. Uh, the kids were better. They they told me how much they appreciated my fight for them, I don't usually like to use the word fight, it's so angry, mm -hmm. but they told me and they thanked me for the experience of being able to have experienced painting a mural. <laughs> I did the only thing that I could. 
and they thank me for the experience of being able to paint in the sunshine and to be able to step back and see legally we thought you know to to see what their art looked like and they were grateful and thrilled for me it wasn't really where i think it i thought it was a drastic measure to have to do so what we're looking at right here is a moment in los angeles history that is pretty deplorable we're looking at the mural capital of the world now being a place in which the individual rights of a, of a citizen, a good citizen, allowing young people to paint on the walls, kids who are doing illegal tagging, and in this case had an opportunity to make an artwork, really at the support, with the support of Barbara Black, who is a, a retired artist and a, a woman who has lived in the valley here. How long have you lived in this neighborhood? 42 years in this house. 42 years in this house. And who saw suddenly the possibility of making art happen in this very dingy little alleyway. And through intimidation and through the new city ordinance, which makes murals illegal in the city of Los Angeles, she has been forced to remove this work. This is the condition of Los Angeles.